for my next trick, I will walk home. What's up, everybody? Look at this thing. So I'm currently at a sprint day, like a little private, cool sprint day I managed to somehow get invited to. And the first car I saw when we pulled up was this. And I was like, sod my video. I've got to make sure I get this thing on video today. So uh, I've interrupted Rob, who owns this. And he said, we're ruining his track time as well. So Rob, come on in, man. <laughs> we'll we'll <laughs> hey, try and make right. this as fun and as fast as possible. But Rob, welcome to my channel. We've just How met today. We, we have uh, yet. We had to do the timing together. So we got to bond a little bit <laughs> over that. Um, please, man, tell me about this thing. They're like, what is it for the side? Like, what is it? Yeah, what a, is it? A lot of people ask me that. It's not a Mark II Escort <laughs> that's had a, you know, been bred with an 850. Uh, it's a Toyota 1000, so Publica abroad, uh, KP30. So uh, if you're into your KP chassis codes, everyone knows the hatchback starlets that were later on, but this was kind of the first of the KP chassis codes. I'll try not to be too nerdy and boring. No, no, today. no, please. We want all the nerdiness on the channel. This is so <laughs> good. Man, Dean, I'm sorry for like ruining your day as well. I'll take the camera off you again now. Cheers, Dean. Everybody say thank you to Dean for like doing that real quick. So uh, Rob, we'll have a look around the car now. Yeah, I'll, I'll free up Dino of his duties. Um, how long have you had this thing for, dude? Talk to us about it. So I've had it 18 years, unbelievably. A lot of cars have come and gone, but this one's, uh, this one's stayed with me. So, Amazing. Uh, bought it for 600 quid, and Love it had that. been rattle canned in red oxide primer, and had a racing stripe painted on it in Dulux. So <laughs> you can imagine the state it was in for that. And it was my daily driver at the time. So uh, first year I had it, first summer, it had a bit of a rebuild and a respray and an upgrade. and put some wheels on it and did some various bits, but kind of hooked it around with my daily driver. That's amazing, dude. So, and then um, got a proper job, so uh, got a proper daily car, and then it just was, um, I was able to kind of go to town on it, and then I guess over the last next 18 years, it's kind of been developed and developed and developed. So different engines, all sorts of stuff. Always old Toyota K-Series engines, but it's had, it started with a 993cc, and it got a 4K, which is the 1300. Uh, and now it's got a 1500, which um, came out of a light ace van. Oh, so no way. <laughs> humble beginnings for quite a noisy little box under the bonnet. <laughs> yeah so you can't buy anything for them at all nothing so everything that isn't original which there isn't much of left yep. is modified uh, or bespoke made um, pretty much all by myself so it's a garage fun project so so this is a real um, at home make it fit car shed, shed built yeah brilliant Every, and I have to made. say I've so, I told you this about 50 times already, but this car has blown my mind. Like <laughs> the second I turned up and I had a look, I got my car off the trailer, we had a look around, I was like, what is this thing? I was like, right, if I only get one video out of today, it has to be this car. And I'm so glad you're such a nice guy and wanted to, and we're willing to do it with me. Um, let's yeah, have, actually. let me show me around, man. Like, yeah, so right. I assume uh, that this, uh, this front lip here isn't standard, no? So, so no, so it, it's had a couple of front lips on it, all Mark One Golf GTI, so, because happily they fit, so you have to narrow them. So golf purists will be upset, but this is actually a Bonrath fiberglass spoiler, so it's about 30 mil deeper than the standard one. Right. But I cut it up, glassed it back together, painted it to fit, to fit this car. So the chin spoiler is the big kind of JDM, classic JDM look, so um, fits with the car. But yeah, it is Mark 1 Golf originally. It looks amazing, modified. absolutely amazing. And I, I assume that at one point in this car's life, it would have had bumpers of some sort? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I've, took the, I've took the bumpers off to play, play race cars and keep it clean. But the reality is it didn't even come with bumpers. Oh, did it not And um, Even if I'd wanted to find some, I couldn't have got any. So uh, yeah, luckily the no bumpers look was part of the theme I was wanting I for it. So a happy coincidence. I but... love, I love the no bumper look. Now, You'll have to forgive my ignorance, but is this badge like the original badge that came on this, or is this some alternative? No, no, no. That's an that's an original '70s Toyota badge. So that was where they were at. Amazing. <laughs> Can't beat stags. Better than no. prancing horses. Amazing. <laughs> Though so Marinello cool. would disagree. <laughs> So 
So we spoke about the front lip and the, the old Toyota badge. I never knew they had those. That's really cool. As we come round the car a little yeah. bit, we, it, I want to just show people as well how like the shape of this thing, because it's you don't get cars like this anymore. It's so tiny. <laughs> Yeah, I think, it's I think so in, tiny. in the period, the kind of Japan were looking at Europe a lot for the kind of car styling and stuff. So there's a little bit of like quite a lot of different cars in it. Like there's a bit of Fiat 850. I always really like in the rear end and, yeah. and stuff. But it, like you say, it doesn't look like anything else. And it was like a little shopping car techni think, technically. When I it think was it's near. so cool. So before we talk about the wheels, yep. I want to just make note of this paint job because it looks okay. in person fantastic. But I overheard your conversation a minute ago and I'd like you to retell that story. Do you mind? Yeah, no, not at all. So the, the paint's a bit of a funny story. So I always painted it myself. Um, and it was at the time, like I say, I bought the car for 600 quid. So it was straight out of uni, no money. It was white fitted with the JDM theme. And it was like the cheapest paint you could get as well. So there was a little bit of that. Um, but I eventually came to paint it again. I couldn't stop the bonnet reacting. I got so sick of it. Um, I handed it to a kind of local paint guy and said, look, I can't keep painting this bonnet. It's ruining my life. Can you sort it for me? Uh, and here's the car to match it. Went on holiday for a week, um, came back and he was like, yeah, I've painted the whole car for you. Call it 400 quid um, <laughs> and a few beers. And I was like, what? Uh, and yeah, and it's just been an amazing paint job. It's probably 12 years old now. It's so insane um, that it costs you 400 not, pounds. Yeah, it's straight out of gun, nothing fancy. And it's just, yeah, and it's it, like you say, it's really presentable and looks good on the car. And yeah, we're stuck with it. So yeah, hats, I just dropped off, on. Hats off to that painter, man. Like yeah, this. there's just a bit, there's something about this car that people kind of tend to gravitate to. I don't know if it's because it's so small or they've never seen one before, but like people tend to help you out. I can imagine, man. And like for me, I can only speak on my own that when I turned up, I saw that, and to me, that is, we'll just let that very loud 86 go by. <laughs> and when I saw it, I was like, there's just something in my brain that was like, that is so cool. That sometimes you can't explain cool. Yeah. Cool doesn't need to have a, a reason, an explanation or anything. You can just look at something and go, that is cool. I don't know why my brain is telling me that's, that I need it, but oh, I like it's it. sick. I had to have a look around it. So. I want to show these people these wheels. Right. Can you explain these to me, please, sir? Yeah, so it's had a few sets of wheels on it over the years. Everything from the usual kind of super lights to um, revolu revolutions to it's had Lotus Twin Cam Steelies on it. So it's 4x110 PCD. So it's pretty close for Ford wheels. So I tend to kind of, I went down that route a little bit, but you know, the most appropriate wheels. And then these turned up kind of as they were, this colour, this condition, rebuilt. Hey, I want to That car is so loud. <laughs> Let's start again when you were saying it matches with the Ford wheels. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So um, it was always easy to get Ford wheels for it because the PCD was so close and they were kind of available in good sizes and offsets and things and, you know, the right retro look for the car. So uh, eventually these came up and they're 4 by 114.3 So because they're not actually that wide, I think they're six and a halves. Um, I've been able to run adapters with them. So I've got rid of this crazy 4x110 PCD and I've got like quite a common PCD, but they fit. So this car's had all sorts of wheels on it. Some of them, the widest, it's had nine inch wheels on the back. So there's loads of clearance. So I've got space for the, the kind of 25 mil and 30 mil spaces in them as well, uh, adapter spaces. So, um, but yeah, they really fit with the car. They're Bridgestone Sharax. So they're a period 70s wheel, they're super light, so they kind of, with the, you the design know, is beautiful. Feeling. They just work. They're like, yeah. The whole car is is brilliant. Like, that's why I literally, I, I said to the boys, I was like, I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna have to take some time out of driving. Luckily, my car's broke, so it's not the <laughs> end of the world. But I was like, I gotta go and nick Rob for a minute and and get that little tire on. And then I saw you parked up here. I was like, oh, perfect. Perfect. May, maybe not so perfect next to the track while cars are going around, but still, it's so great <laughs> to like to look around this property. And I hope the audience are gonna really like it, man, because I certainly do.
Thank you. For my next trick, I will walk home. Let's go around the back end because the yeah, back has its own little character to itself. It's got this really cute little butt. <laughs> and obviously, it's bumperless. Yeah, it is. Um, so, so the bump bumperless themes continued. So I was always Racer86 on the forums and in my blogs back in the day. So going back the full kind of 18 years of it, it's always like the plate was R86. Oh, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. There's, a, there's always a little bit of meant to be with this old car stuff, I reckon. Um, but yeah, so the back, the back is just exactly as it was. I've put like an old trailer light <laughs> for yep. a number plate light <laughs> on it. But uh, that's it, pretty much. Original badge, clean and simple. Um, super light. The exhaust all homemade. So it's just a single box there. I was a bit worried about the noise limit, but it's just a tiny little cherry bomb, but straight through. Love that. Cherry bomb, brilliant. Um, which is, you know, old school. Amazing. Um, do you mind popping a bonnet for me so we yeah, can have a no, little look at this engine that's under there, man? Because I'm all. telling you now. Yeah, so, so as you can see, his, he was bent down. I've gone to town on cleaning and removing things it didn't need. So <laughs> the long bonnet cable. So the bonnet cable, where, how does that work now? You've got a short one in here that's under the car? Yeah, basically it just runs down here instead of running through here Amazing. and back into the, Amazing. Back into the car. Amazing. So. at this engine bay. That's oh the engine. Oh my God. This, this whole car, I know you, I overheard your conversation again. I know you don't see it, but this car fits in at a show all day long. This, the, the level of build that this car is that you have accidentally done is <laughs> honestly so high. And I don't know whether it, because obviously we've only just met, so I don't know yeah. whether if your expectations for mint cars <laughs> are like way up here. But to me, this is, if this came to a show and I was judging, I'd be like, I need to give this some sort of award for just being this cool. <laughs> no, so thanks, that's uh, really cool. So, so yeah. this is a 1.5 out of a van? Yeah, so this is so so getting nerdy again. Toyota uh, uh, K series engines come in various sizes, but kind of the one liters, 1 1.3, uh, a 1.5, and a 1.7. So the 1.5 came in the light ace van, and it's the biggest over square one they do. So you want it to rev. This is your this is the one. Um, so yeah, so it's been uprighted. So you see the carbs are at a slight angle yep. from the factory. The engines are 30 degrees over, but when and as was common with race cars of the period, even the like KP61s, hatchback starlets and stuff, um, they can't the engine over to fit bigger carbs in. There's no right. other kind of reason for that. So it's all it's all sat on bespoke mounts. It's got a five-speed gearbox behind it. But I've just had the engine rebuilt by Classic Engine Workshop um, in Redditch, and we basically it, things got out of hand. We've gone to town <laughs> with it, so it's been polished, uh, bored out, nitrided, balanced. Everything's lightened. The entire Pelton and Motorsport catalogue has been thrown at it, so it's got vernier timing gear, it's converted to belt drive, uh, carbs are all rebuilt, manifolds are modified, four branch KP61 manifold, because this has got a steering box, not a steering rack, and with the engine being upright, so it's all had to be turned um, and rebuilt, um, modified cooling system, big oil cooler on a stat, Celica GT4 oil filter, um, Loads of little, little stuff like deleted the ballast system off the um, coil and completely redone all the brakes. So I've got a, all new brake pipes, but it's got um, adjustable um, rear, rear pressure on it. So all these bits are custom. This is custom. I've, when I built the engine mounts, I've built them to take M3, BMW M3 mounts. So it's got M3 mounts, unique cross member, uh, K50 gearbox, so it's a five-speed gearbox out of a Corolla K70 five speed, Corolla. Sorry, just in case that car was too low going by, you've got a five speed It's gearbox. got a five speed gearbox in it. Um, and it's got a 4.1 TRD limited slip diff in the oh, back. Wow. Um, <laughs> which is another amazing story of people helping me out with this car. So when, when the blog was a thing, blogging was a thing, I just put a post up like, has anyone got an LSD for this car? So like you, I was kind of into drifting. Um, because it's an early chassis, it's a six inch diff and it's really rare and they don't exist. Anyway, this guy got in touch with me um, called Koji and he said I've got a diff I've got KP31s in Japan love them I've got a diff here's a video of it working literally posted it to me from Japan with a load of mags like Drift Tengoku a load of brochures original KP brochures wow. for it and all sorts of stuff and some stickers like really rare Tom stickers and TRD stickers and said let me know it fits and then like pay me afterwards or whatever and he just like and it fit and it's been in the car and before this event I've just rebuilt it and done the backlash in it again to make sure it would do skids if I needed it to um, but yeah so that's it axle stock so it's still on drum brakes but at the back um, it's got big discs on the front 
but kind of, again, more out of necessity. So I've just rebuilt the calipers. They're kind of opposing piston calipers. So I didn't want to go conventional wheel woods or big brakes. I wanted to keep them. Um, but luckily they're on independent brackets. So I've, I've just had new brackets machined to pull the calipers out a bit. And then I'm running bigger discs off a of KE20. So it's gone from massive 206 mil discs to 227 mil discs. Amazing. And in this sort of world in cars, this sort of weight, so it's about 600 kilos. Um, well, the car only weighs 600, 600 kilos with yeah. a full interior and everything. Yeah, yeah, as oh, you see it. Wow. So man. it's. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it parties even though it's got quite a little engine. This is a very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Tap it's just, here. Yeah, it's just a lever so you can release the pressure before you take it off. That's really So if you've got cool to take it well. off hot, it kind of uh, stops it exploding. That is awesome. So bits like that. Other bits like. So, like I say, I, I originally bought this car on my girlfriend's credit card for 600 quid and I built it with no money and but I've kind of kept nods like this so this the linkage is made out of Meccano no way so it's not the best obviously and it's like the, it works pretty well but it's not perfect but I've kept it as I've rebuilt and upgraded the car because it's just a nod to kind of the roots of this car was built outside in a carport kind of 18 years ago yeah and it was kind of what works works and you know, I could put a fancy throttle linkage on it, but that's kind of a cool nod to kind of the work I did on it. And my dad helped me out and we kind of made it work sort of thing. Amazing. So, um, I love that, mate. Oh God, this yeah. car is just everything that I love about <laughs> modified cars. This car has it and so do you. Like this is Thanks, pretty, dude. I don't care if this video only gets 10 views <laughs> and then 10 views are all me because this is the best, this is such a great moment for me. I just want to, I want to just make, note that in reality, <laughs> that this is such a fantastic moment, man. What suspension does this run? So suspension wise, so rear's easy. So it's still on leaf springs at the rear. Mm -hmm. so, so good old fashioned cart springs, <laughs> um, but they've got a leaf out and been reversed and lowering blocks to drop it. I've converted it to run mini, classic mini rear dampers okay. or front dampers on the rear okay. with some brackets so I can actually get parts for it. Yep. Like, so that's a big thing. Front is gas coilovers, so they were sent away and machined. Um, now the top mounts are KW top mounts. Um, I was told when I got them, they're off a BTCC BMW car. Wow. And they were stolen off a shelf in a warehouse somewhere <laughs> by someone, but I can't <laughs> confirm or deny that. What we'll I know take is- take it though. They are, it's a cool story. We'll so I that. want to believe it. And two, they are KW top mounts. So it's a bit of mix and match again. That is um, absolutely mega meat. Can we have a look inside now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the interior on this car is once again just perfect. So me. as I've got older, it's kind of toned down and it didn't have carpet in it. And now it's got carpet in it and things. And it used to have harnesses and now it's got seat belts. But it's got kind of period bucket seats and I've gone for a wood steering wheel. Um, Let's get these bucket seats in for the people to see. It just looks exactly like I'd expect it to look. Does that make sense? Like yeah. for the rest of the build, how the rest of it looks, like it would be easy to just have Recaro, you know, normal pole positions yeah. and a Nardi steering wheel that's like like mine one in my Civic, but you've gone for the wood Nardi, like the wood grain, yeah. you know, like it's it's supposed to be it's Channon and a little bit of kind of Porsche RS vibes. So I've cut like carpeted out the rear like a GT3 RS would be with the seat delete. Um, trying to make it a bit more, you know, OEM sports purpose Porsche feel as they like to say yeah, stuff yeah. like the the little rubber latch on the glove box so the glove box is broke you can't get the bits or a glove box in the world but I saw that on an old sports purpose 60s 911 race car they just Where put am I looking one, here? So, so just on the glove oh, box yeah, lid yeah, yeah, yeah. like weird stuff weird little bits and bobs like that which is you know it exists because the glove box was broken but it's kind of again a bit of a nod to that kind of period OEM style tuning um, and not kind of what Toyota was doing, but what other brands were doing. I uh, mate, this car has made my day. <laughs> like, honestly, like thanks very much. Even though my car is broken, <laughs> <laughs> my day has been made because I've been able to meet you, have a real talk about the car. So normally on my videos, we'd go out for a drive and talk more, but we've been doing that here. Obviously, yeah. we're at track. Um, like you said, it rub it's rubbing a little bit, so. <laughs> You don't need my fat belly in there on the passenger side, <laughs> but if you don't mind me chucking a GoPro in. Yeah, absolutely. So we can get some just noise of it going around and just have some fun. And I'll, I'll yeah, film cool. you going around on the outside. So uh, cool. So we can show the people. And uh, man, this car is freaking awesome, dude. <laughs> like I, oh, I can't stop. I'm smiling like a child. Like this is fantastic. Thank yeah. you, Rob, for building it and for sticking with it. And oh yeah, no problem. And being so... so enthusiastic about it as well, man. Like you, I think meeting somebody like you really gives me the motivation to go home and re-sort out a lot of stuff on my things. You know, where you're yeah. like, oh, I've got that 
It's like, good. I want to, I want that enthusiasm back again, man. Just the whole thing of that. Just yeah, I think that's what's been so good about having it for so long. Is like, you know, when enthusiasm dies off for it, then just park it. But it's sort of always been there, and I'll keep it forever. I'd never yeah. sell it. So um, other cars have come and gone, but this is kind of stuck around. So and uh, long may it continue. Oh, mate, I love it. Thank you so much. I've got to shake. No problem. Thank you so much for being on the channel. And no, uh, no, really cool. And I've kind of just come up to you and been like, "Can I nick you for a minute?" <laughs> um, but I really do appreciate it, man. And I yeah, really no, hope that. Uh, Everybody that's watched this on my YouTube will leave a massive like on the video to show Rob how much we all love this. Leave a comment down below. If you knew what this car was before he told you, I'd love to know down in the comments too, because I had no idea what it was. I had to come yeah. and ask him. And if you've got a shed full of bits for it, I'd also love to hear of you. If anybody <laughs> in the nothing. world is a collector <laughs> or enjoyer of the Toyota 1000 or any of the cars that share the parts with this, Get in touch with Rob. How can people get in touch with you? Do you have Instagram or anything like that? Yeah, best through uh, Instagram. I'm at Racer86. Racer86. That will be on the screen now. And I am going to follow you in one second too because I want to carry on Mega, watching these. Uh... Come on, what an amazing little car. I'm so glad I came today. I got on at the last minute on this day and I got to meet Rob and this fantastic little car. I hope you guys have enjoyed this walk around, a little bit of track footage we've been able to give you. We've done the best we can within this, in, in this situation and the, uh, that we're in. Man, I've fallen in love today with this little car. Hopefully it won't be the last time we see it and the last time we meet Rob. This is so cool. Let us know down below if you've enjoyed. And uh, for more interesting car features like this, Make sure you subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Adam Ivel if that's your thing too. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. How the hell am I going to top this thing now? God damn it, man.